Hi, I'm Peter Matavish. Welcome back to another D Street tutorial. In this one, we're doing 1011 B2. So it's an axiometric prediction question, uh, which is a great question as far as I'm concerned. It's a brilliant question. And I'm, as I, as I said before, I'm not going to read through the question, but we'll just do a quick overview of it. So you have basically the exit of the Dublin Sport Tunnel. Uh, they're giving you the angles to the axis and so on. So let's look at part A. Part A is draw the axiometric axis X, Y, and Z and the isosceles triangle ABC. So they're giving you so much so much help in this question and uh, you should be able to read off the construction lines, different color lines and so on, exactly how to get certain elements of it. Okay, so let's go through part A first and we'll do that first and I'll fast forward through it. So that's part A done, it says draw the axis X, Y, and Z and the isosceles triangle ABC. And to find ABC, the distance from A to B was a, uh, 14 meters. Now it's, there's a scale of 1 to 100, so scale that down. Half it to the right hand side and find the distance down where it crosses the X axis, straight line across. And it shows you in the question, how do you get C? There's no height given, but it tells you that this line here, AC, is 90 degrees or perpendicular to the x-axis. Same thing with the line CB is perpendicular to the z-axis. Okay, so there shouldn't be nothing too difficult in that. Part B then it says draw the elevation and end view in the orientation as shown. So we have to do the end view and elevation. So we'll start off with the end view. Okay. And as you can see in this close-up here of the question, They're giving you so much detail. Project out point B, project out point C. Do your semicircle where it cuts the axis you're projecting, the angle you're projecting, i.e., Z, on the semicircle. Join that back to the corners of the semicircle where they start from, and that's your angle. Then after that, just put in your measurements. Okay, so we're going to go through all that section first. So I might not fast forward through it, I'll just talk through it maybe. So project out, and the angle you want to project out at is the Z axis here. So project out Z, project out C and B as well. Draw a line now. Make, keep this, it should be small enough, but keep it uh, light just in case it interferes with the 3D below here. So we draw a line down here, perpendicular. I think it even shows you that in the question. but it's perpendicular to your z-axis, so it's perpendicular here. Next thing we do is we bisect this line and draw a semicircle to cut the z-axis, and we're cut the z-axis, which you can see in the question, we join back to this point here and there, okay? And what you're finding there is the angle of the end view. Okay, this is the plane that the end view is sitting on, and that's what you're projecting onto. So this is the corner in here, and the length of the base of it is this point here. The angle of the front face is that angle there, and we have a height of 3.5 meters. So we can do that bottom section. We can't do the top section until we do the uh, elevation. Okay, so that's the end view done. Now we could have done the elevation first of all, but it doesn't make any odds. Now for the elevation, you're doing exactly the same thing. You're projecting points A and C out here to the left hand side at the same angle as X. You're going to draw a line down like this one here and bisect, the, bisect it, 
find your semicircle where it cuts the x axis. That is your angle for the plane, and you can do the elevation. So I'm going to fast forward through this one. So that's our angle here for our elevation, and you see that the elevation is based on a semicircle. So by sect this line here, draw the semicircle, and you have the 3.5 meters of a height again to find straight edges. Okay, so we're going to fast forward through this elevation. Now that's your elevation done and I marked in this line here because that height is the full height or oh, no, the radius is the full height which you can step off here and finish off our end view. So that is our elevation and our end view done which was part B and part C now is draw the completed axonometric projection. So the complete axonometric projection will project from your elevation down the same angle as your x-axis and from the end view down the same angle as your z-axis. So I'm going to label, I'll label the four straight corners here first and we'll leave the curve to the last section. All right? So our points here represent a line, so it's at the back, so that's why I'm enabled the same point at the back. So project down, project across, get those points. Okay, so that is the base of the structure put in. We have our angle here slanting up, and we now need to put in the roof section up. So the roof section, <coughs> the roof section is going from zero over here to three. So we'll have uh, an arc at the back, and then it's at an angle here. Now this is what I mean by they're giving you so much help with this question. So if you see this part that I've zoomed in on of the question. See they're giving you cut sections. So what we're going to do is do the same. We're going to mark a height up here on our end view, draw a cut section across. So a section will cut across, give us a distance from the back to the front. We're going to mark that distance up here to find where it is on the elevation, project down, mark in our distance from here, and that will give us a range of points. So let's mark in every five mil. So if there's a label here, we say three, so we go with this is 0 0.4, 5, your center point here, 0 0.6, you have 7 and 8. Over on your end view then, this represents 4 and 8, this represents 5 and 7, and then you have 0.6 at the top. So it's only a matter now of projecting your points, again, down from the end view, over from the elevation and it'll give us a range of points here in the front and the back and then you can finish off the axiometric projection. So that is the axiometric done. Now, I've put in the strong line here. It was, uh, just checking the question there, it wasn't added here, so it is literally just the canopy there. So that line should be strong, and this line should be strong. Now, the last section of it is part D, and it says, in the pictorial projection, identify the traces of the simply inclined plane that contains, uh, that contains the exit. 
So if it contains the exit, as you can see here in the end view, it's inclined at that angle there. And where it hits, the horizontal plane is here at lines one and two. So I'm gonna extend those back. And also there's a change of direction here. So we'll have a strong line there, even though should we? It's all the one surface by nose. So let's put this in with uh, green or yellow maybe. So your horizontal trace, so this is sitting on the horizontal plane, so therefore this plane is cutting the horizontal plane at that angle there. So that is your H, T. Why am I stopping at this axis here? Because that's your X axis, so that's where the vertical plane begins. So what is the angle it is making with the vertical plane? It's project that point back. This point here is the point on the plane till it hits the vertical plane. And that will join back to our horizontal trace here. So basically it's the same angle as our uh, BC line. Because as you see here, what we're doing is projecting points. We take a point on the plane, point three and zero. Project back the same angle as horizontal trace to cut the vertical plane. And that's the same distance back there, so it's hitting the vertical plane here, and that's our vertical trace. So that's the question done, and as you see here, this was another request. So if you have requests, just let me know in the comment section below. And again, as always, I hope this helped and we'll see you in the next one.